Hello, my name is Susan Guillory. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm 68 years old. I was diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome in the year 2000 when I was 50 years old by Dr. Michael Hollick of Boston. He is a world-famous osteoporosis specialist and was just learning about Ehlers-Danlos. For many years, I had had severe osteoporosis, had had five major falls and fractures due to a, what was considered a childhood lack of coordination. In fact, it was so bad that when I was in high school, my nickname was Spastic. But he seemed to pull it all together. And I absolutely did not want to accept the diagnosis. Uh, it was not understood in Boston. And when I went online to read what little there was, it um, seemed to, quite an uh, ominous diagnosis. So I just kind of put it on the back burner for years and tried to ignore it. But the symptoms kept reappearing. I started to develop a dilated aorta. I had fainting spells. Uh, again, doctors in Boston would not relate it to the EDS. But Michael suspected it. And so then um, in the year January 2012, I ended up having to have a hip replacement right hip replacement, and um, just could not seem to recover from it. Um, just never could build my strength up in my right leg. The doctor who performed it, I told him I had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and I even had Michael Hollick send him a letter stating that, but he did not accept that diagnosis. And in fact, the day after the surgery, sent his fellow into my room to announce that they, the team, had decided that I did not have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which was very disheartening to me at the time, as you can imagine. So months and months went on. I could not walk. I had to use a walker. I, for the first mm, month after the surgery, I could not even get myself out of bed to go to the bathroom. It was that bad. No one diagnosed me properly. No one understood what was going on, and I was absolutely terrified. So exactly one year after the surgery, I was visiting my sister-in-law, who is um, a doctor of internal medicine. And I was walking very poorly uh, with, uh, I forget what it's called, the Van Trellenberg walk or something like that. Uh, I would have to use a walker all day long. and. Then in the evening, just to try to get to the table for a meal, I had that very tilted walk. And she said, Susan, there's something very wrong. You need to go see your orthopedic surgeon who did the surgery. I saw him in February. He said, oh, your problem is you're not exercising enough. Well, I have a type A personality. I'm an ex exercise fiend. If a PT tells me to do something Five times I do it 10. So I was extremely disheartened. So I went back to Michael Hollick, who also said, yeah, you should be walking by now normally. But he said, um, there is a clinic in Paris that specializes in Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Uh, you might want to consider going there. So luckily, I have some friends in Paris uh, one of them is a retired doctor. <clears throat> so he welcomed me into Paris, uh, and one of his family members was my interpreter and took me around and everything. I literally could not get in and out of a taxi without someone helping to lift me in and out. That is how bad it was. I could not have sat in a chair chatting to you right now for more than five minutes without being in great discomfort. So I arrived in Paris that May 2013, and this family friend <clears throat> telephoned Professor Hamonet, who was then at Hotel Dieu, at an EDS clinic there that no longer exists, and we are trying very hard to, to recreate something 
bigger and better. It, it, it was a wonderful start there. My family friend was able to convince Professor Hamane that yes, I indeed was in Paris just to see him and would he please fill me in. So he agreed to see me at the end of the day. I arrived at the clinic um, and I had reams of medical papers with me. We discussed every single detail of everything and he at that point was just drawing up a list of questions to ask people um, for yes and no answers so that he could then, based on all the yes answers, deduce whether you had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and what type. And of course, I passed it with flying colors with the hypermobility type. He ended up spending five hours with me. I, at the time, spoke a few words of French, and he was struggling with his English, and the poor thing was exhausted. He was so dedicated and so fabulous. And he immediately set up appointments for me, first of all, to meet with Elodie, to have a bodysuit made, a, a vêtement compressif, because he explained to me I needed that in order to be able to move properly, to be more comfortable all these things. And then he suggested I had to see this type of specialist, that type of specialist, and so I had the body suits made, and I knew that I needed to see uh, regularly a, a physical therapist. So again, the family friend found a wonderful physical therapist whom I see to this day here in Paris. And in his office, I also see a pelvic floor physical therapist, a woman. And I also was receiving, receiving vitamin C injections in Boston because at the um, Linus Pauling Institute, they've done a study that megadoses of vitamin C can help rebuild connective tissue. So as a shot in the dark, I was willing to try anything. I found a wonderful doctor, um, Dr. Christian Champion here, and he gives me vitamin C injections. So there, there is that wonderful team. Then I kept returning to Paris on a regular basis. I did every imaginable test. Uh, one of my most major symptoms was severe insomnia, which I developed, um, say, around the age of 43. And the doctors in Boston put it down to menopause. And of course, not a single treatment they did for me worked. So I finally found some doctors who put me on multiple sleeping pills, allopathic sleeping pills, and so finally they found one that worked, it was called Trazodone. No one had thought to do a sleep study. So Professor Hamane introduced me to Dr. Metlen at Hotel Dieu and I had a sleep study done with him and he showed me, yes indeed, I do have sleep issues. And Professor Hamane said that I would need to take medication the rest of my life, that it was all related and explained to me how the brain works and all this. Professor Hamane has introduced me to a fabulous team of doctors who have treated all of the problems I am developing as I age with EDS because it does progressively get worse in some cases. And so I do everything I can to slow down the process of this. So I have seen Dr. Richard Amoretti and have had all the heart tests that he requires, including a stress test, all these things. And yes, I do indeed have a dilated aorta, but what is amazing is I was told this in Boston, but here 
cardiologists actually do the stress tests and the uh, EKGs and all these things. In America, they just use technicians. So what the cardiologist told me who did these tests for me, she said that only they can really read them properly and as the test is occurring. And so what she discovered is that she said, I have a uniquely dilated aorta. Mine actually bulges at the site of the dilatation. No one had ever told me that before. And so that is a, has a certain significance. I don't know what, but who knows? Maybe it's related to EDS. Maybe we'll find out one day. So Dr. Amoretti has also introduced me to an osteopath, Dr. Baynard, who has been fabulous in helping ease the pain and discomfort I get. I have an extreme sensitivity to allopathic medicine, which some EDS patients have. One of my four brothers has EDS also, and his sensitivity to allopathic medicine is even stronger than mine. My brother lives in Arizona, but Professor Hamane was in Boston for a rheumatology convention, and numerous EDS doctors from around the world attended the convention. So my brother flew in, and Professor Hamane was able to spend about five hours diagnosing him too, because he said they like to see family members. So the professor has had a profound and deep influence in my life, in my family's life, and we need a clinic to pull all of these wonderful doctors together. I am also seeing Dr. Benedetti because I'm developing major EDS digestion problems. Um, about 18 months ago, my weight had dropped precipitously to a below normal BMI, and I could not understand what was happening. So she had my functional medicine doctor in Boston do a lot of tests, like food sensitivity tests and such things. I brought them to her, and she put, has put me on a very, very strict diet, very, very limited. She has discovered that I no longer digest grains, and particularly flour products. And the only grain she allows me to eat is quinoa. And she does not allow me to have any cow's milk products because they cause inflammation. And Dr. Benedetti also has me uh, eating meat, which I had been avoiding for a while, uh, which has ha helped me to regain weight and to get stronger. She also has me eating goat and sheep milk products because they, do, they are medium chain molecule foods, whereas cow's milk is long chain molecule. She will not allow me to eat any gluten, and it has been phenomenal. She has put me on special supplements, and they also are helping. Uh, they are geared towards uh, treating digestive disorders, and of course she's put me on a very mild probiotic. I couldn't even handle a probiotic at the beginning. Uh, Professor Hamane helped me with the situation too. I was developing such intense uh, gastro pain that sometimes I couldn't walk. So he has prescribed some medication for that, which I take only when I absolutely have to because the side effects do affect, last at least 24 hours. Um, and also, I have started to develop lung issues related to EDS, and Professor Hamane has developed incredible oxygen therapy for, for us and has treated many patients with this oxygen therapy. Last winter, I spent three, three and a half months here in Paris and he ordered an oxygen machine for me to use because my breathing, thanks to the pollution, had become really, uh, really quite poor and I was coughing all the time. And then he suggested to me that I get, take a year-round apartment in Paris. I wasn't about to turn that thought down, so now I have one. He feels I need to be treated more often. He's absolutely correct. 
So I also have discovered, quite ironically, when I applied for my visa to stay for one year in France, I had to have a physical, which included an x-ray. And the doctor was a woman who was so kind and sweet. I had brought all of my medical records and explained EDS to her. She was fascinated. I told her all about Professor Hamane and his clinics and how he needs to, you know, spread the word about this. And she said, well, technically, I should fail you based on your x-ray. But she said, because you're having such great medical care in France, I will pass you, but I'm going to give you a copy of your x-ray in a sealed envelope, and you have to promise me that you will see a pulmonologist immediately for another x-ray and a CT scan. So thanks to Professor Hamane, I saw Dr. Elizabeth Marier, and I've had the CT scan, and yes, it ha does show a problem. So it's all amazing. It's all due to Paris. And we need a fabulous, huge clinic to pull all of these incredible people together so we can cover every aspect and every layer of every potential treatment. From what I understand from all of these wonderful doctors who are treating me in Paris, EDS is a genetic disease that is passed on from parent to child. I believe that the way it works is that one parent carries the gene and all the children then inherit the gene. And Dr. McLean told me that he has invented a word called the burnout syndrome and that he feels that we can have the gene, it's lying dormant, and then we have a major life event, or we're totally stressed out with our lives, and it either brings up the symptoms or aggravates the symptoms that are there. And he very cleverly asked me loads of questions about my adult life around the time that I started developing all these symptoms of the falls and fractures and the severe osteoporosis. And sure enough, in that year that all of this started to happen very severely, I had four major life events, all very stressful. So I found that absolutely amazing. Three of my brothers, I can see by their body movements and their physiques and their semi-flexibility and things that, yes, they have the gene, but none of them have what we would call, I think, active EDS. But my other brother, the one in Arizona, and I absolutely have full-blown active living EDS that we are constantly trying to cope with and handle in our lives. The thing that I find is so important is to have one space where everyone who has EDS can come to and have all of our ha things handled in-house. It, it, it's, it's a life changer. I now, as my joke is, how many hours in the day can I quote unquote fake normal? And if I wear my compression bodysuit and I've done all of my proper exercises and PT and followed my diet very carefully from Dr. Benedetti and all those things and taken all my supplements that I can go out in an evening with friends and yes, you would never know there was something wrong with me. But when I go out in the street shopping, my orthopedic surgeons here <clears throat> at Clinique Mosin have told me they don't want me out the door without my walker for fear that I were to fall again. They said that um, a fracture at my age is not easy to, to heal with Ehlers-Danlos. So I, I do try to, to heed their warnings. Or if I'll go out, I will hold on to someone's arm. 
but I am a happier, healthier person. Also thanks to the wonderful psychologist who Professor Hamane has introduced me to. I've seen him twice, and he has given me the most wonderful perspective on the disease and life in general and aging. Because like he said, it's all coming together for me at once, and that, that's a pretty tough one. He doesn't speak a word of English. It's been most interesting. Um, I'm studying a lot of French. The very first doctor whom Professor Hamane introduced me to was Professor Anne Gompel, who was chief of gynecology at Hotel Dieu and the number one expert and, and at Cochon. Cochin. Cochin. Can we start again? <laughs> um, I don't even know what the hell Cochin is. is it? <laughs> Cochin, it sounds like a pig. <laughs> Do it again? Yeah. The very first doctor who Professor Hamane introduced me to was Professor Anne Gompel, who was chief of gynecology at Hotel Dieu and was at Hospital Cochin. And is probably the world expert in EDS and gynecological issues. I did not understand that the issues I had developed uh, in giving birth to my three children and subsequent problems were actually related to EDS. And she had to send me to another specialist for all sorts of evaluations so then she could make some conclusions and as a result of that, I have regular pelvic floor treatment, which um, has been an absolute godsend. It's not understood very much in America. It's considered very strange. In France, it's accepted at every hospital and every clinic, and certainly postpartum. So, EDS, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, has many social connotations. Uh, first of all, um, my mother had EDS. Professor Hamane figured that out. And she was labeled a hypochondriac her entire life. And I look back on her, her situations, and I'm repeating so many of them, but I'm understood, and I'm also being treated. What a difference. And because of that, I feel my mother had many social stigmas and uh, was at times considered to be mentally ill. I actually went to a doctor in Boston, uh, a doctor of internal medicine, probably around the year 2005 told her all my symptoms of all my pains and this is and that's and others and the severe insomnia. She promptly sent me to a psychiatrist who did um, some kind of written evaluation of me, uh, a questionnaire type thing, read it and said, Miss Guillory, there's absolutely nothing psychologically wrong with you and you'd be wasting my time and your money returning. But again, I wasn't given any answer or anything positive. And uh, I have a daughter and two sons. My daughter is extremely sympathetic. She has met many of my doctors here in Paris. She is very impressed. She feels very much that having a clinic is the most important thing. Uh, because she wants her mother to be a whole and happy person. And my two sons, well, the older son has finally accepted the EDS diagnosis because his uncle who has it had a serious man-to-man -man talk with him. Uh, he doesn't go out of his way to be 
particularly helpful, but at least he has accepted it. My younger son um, feels that I'm a hypochondriac. He does not want to accept it, which is actually uh, not an unusual thing I have learned in, um, in sons. Um, so when I'm around him, I make bloody well sure I fake normal. <laughs> and it smooths things over in our relationship. And as far as my friends in Boston go, um, my close friends have seen me go from extreme physical and emotional neediness to plowing through all of this with my type A personality and my steely determination, which sometimes drives people crazy, but at this point, at my age, I don't care anymore. If, if I need to be a Machiavellian princess and cure myself or heal myself in any way possible, I'm bloody well going to do it. And so they really admire that in me. And uh, they're very supportive. In fact, they love getting, getting get little invitations to come to Paris. And they actually will come with me to some of my medical appointments and things. So uh, I feel that my goal in life right now is to help others. It actually always has been. But I have a new challenge in that I want to spread the word of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome in America and in France and in Paris and help in any way I can to establish a clinic here and anywhere that it's needed because um, it's a tough life with EDS and any alleviation of suffering is um, something that gladdens my heart.